Hey, it's Brian from Winter Garden Yoga. And today we're going to look at three yoga stretches every bicyclist should learn right now. These stretches are going to help alleviate neck pain, back pain, hip pain. They should help balance out opposing muscle groups on the fronts and the backs of your body to not only help you be free of pain, but to also help you improve your cycling performance. So when you're ready, grab a yoga mat and let's get started. Awesome, let's get started. So first we'll lie face down on the mat and this is just gonna kinda help warm up the spine and prepare us for the yoga stretches that are coming. Now I'm gonna turn uh, towards the camera every now and then, but please don't turn towards the camera so to speak. Try to keep your head in position. You can rest your chin or your forehead on the ground or turn one ear toward the ground, point your toes behind you and just rest in a face down position. And we're trying to breathe in and out through the nose and in and out through your tummy. It's called diaphragmatic breathing. In general, we want to shoot for about five to ten breaths, but you may need a little longer, especially if you're particularly stiff in your upper back, or really if you're stiff pretty much in your entire spine. The goal is to breathe and relax so that we can start doing some spinal extension, which is the first yoga stretch. So let's hang out here and breathe just a little longer. If you had one ear on the ground, go ahead and switch to the other side. And now we'll try for the first stretch, which is called the locust. For locust pose, if it's possible, bring your chin to the ground and put your hands under your shoulders like you're getting ready to do a push-up. Tone your legs and slowly, using your back muscles, slowly start to peel your skull, ribs, and as much of the torso as you can off the ground. Now we're trying to strengthen all of the muscles in the back. The hands are just here for decoration. Now if you feel strong enough through your spine, the spinal muscles, you can try taking your hands away from the ground. If that feels too intense, bring your hands back to the ground immediately. They will act as training wheels. So the stronger and stronger you get through the power of extension, lifting your chest off the ground, the more and more um, you can use your hands less and less. Hands back to the ground and then just gently lower yourself back to the face down position. The locust pose is for extending your spine. The next pose we're gonna do, the half bridge pose, is gonna help extend your hips. So let's come to a seated position and lie flat on your back please. Bend your knees and you can hold on to your kneecaps so you can hold on under your knees. And again, just take a few breaths to let everything sort of simmer down and relax as we prepare for the next pose. Now one at a time, place one foot on the ground, then the other foot on the ground. 
hands will be by your side. On the inside, you want to do a muscular contraction. It's called a Kegel. The Kegel muscles are the same muscles you would use to stop yourself from going to the bathroom. I know it sounds weird, but when you lift those muscles up into your body, it helps give you what's called intra-abdominal compression and intra-abdominal stability, which just basically means it's helping to keep your torso rigid. And that's what we want to help keep the spine safe. So the Kegels first on the inside. On the outside, tuck your pelvis in a way that you're completely flat on your yoga mat. Now, once you've got your Kegels, once you've got your posterior pelvic tilt, keep both those contractions. And now we slowly try to peel the hips off the ground. And then you're trying to go one backbone at a time until you've extended your hips. Only go so far as you can comfortably. And the hip extension takes place here. If you feel um, a little bony ridge here, your hip bone, you might feel a big dip between your hip bone and your thigh bone. We're trying to get rid of that dip to the best of our ability by tucking the pelvis under. It's called a posterior pelvic tilt. We're trying to lengthen the hip flexors here. If you're really tight, your bridge might look like this at first, and that's okay. The more and more you practice, the more and more you tilt your pelvis and push with your feet, the more and more you'll get rid of that gap between your ASIS and your thigh. Now slowly peel yourself down with control, one backbone at a time. Slow and controlled all the way down. You're trying to feel each spinal segment touch the ground before your seat is on the ground. And that's the half bridge. The third of the yoga stretches is downward facing dog. So locust helped us with spinal extension and that helps offset all the spinal flexion from uh, hunching over the handlebars. The half bridge helped us with hip extension to help offset all of the hip flexion from all the pedaling. And now downward facing dog is just going to help with uh, stretching the hamstrings, the low back, and the glutes. It also help stretch out the top part of the body and the arms as well. It's just it's a very beneficial pose to help offset cycling in general. So without further ado, downward facing dog. At first, to the best of your ability, come to all fours please. Your hands directly under your shoulders, your knees directly under your hips, and we'll tuck our toes. Now, kind of like what we did in the locust pose, we want to extend our spine. In this case, lift your chin. You're going to lift your tailbone simultaneously. And your spine is going to sort of drop toward the ground. It should be a muscle contraction. Keep your muscles contracting. Once you feel that your spine is fully extended and contracted, you try to push with your hands to get your hips up as high as possible. Your legs will straighten automatically. And you're just trying to get your hips up and your head down. Now once you've gotten as far as you can go, relax your spine so that it can go neutral. And then constantly do your best and work on straightening your legs. Steady breathing. Again, we're trying for about five slow, steady breaths. Back to all fours. You've got to be patient with downward facing dog because there's a lot going on. 
So what I demonstrated a second ago, that could take months and months and months of ye or years. It takes a while before you can get your feet to the ground and have fully extended legs. The key is to keep working on it. So what does that mean? Try to extend your spine as long as possible and once your hips are up and your head is down, then you relax your spine. Your knees can be bent a lot. That's okay. But you try to use the fronts of your legs to help straighten your legs. That's where you get the stretch in your hamstrings. So for example, all fours, tuck your toes, extend the spine. I'm trying to keep my spine extended as long as I can. Now, if you start to feel stuck here, that's okay. It's okay to feel stuck, but keep working. Keep pushing with your hands, and you're trying, you want to use these muscles of your legs to help try to extend your legs. You're constantly pushing rearward. You're trying to get the weight out of your hands into your legs. It will take a while, but once you get the hang of it, you'll start to feel the therapeutic benefits of downward facing dog. It'll feel really good uh, on your hamstrings to get a hamstring release, a glute release, and just everything that's called uh, the posterior chain, all the muscles running from your toes pretty much to your nose, get a nice good stretch. Start slowly and build gradually. Do your best to try to hold each pose or whichever variation of the pose you're in for five slow, deep, controlled breaths. You can do these stretches before your ride. You can do these stretches after your ride. If there's enough space and if you're taking a break in the middle of your ride, you can do the stretches there too. Give them a try. Let me know what you think. Thanks.